Eight finger on a hippie history of Garland Cavendale. I'll warm you up a little bit for the book on the, this video performance. It's a 10 hour video performance. Um, yeah. This performance will teleport old hippies back into the boundless, rare freedom in India during the hashish powered erotic golden age of the hippie trip in India and Kathmandu between 1964 and 1973. We had a seven year wink of extraordinary freedom and fun. Yeah. Um, it all comes alive through uh, my interviews and flashbacks from Eight Finger Eddie, India's most famous expatriate. Yeah. Eddie was the first uh, Westerner to pioneer Goa and incredibly lived in India for 44 years on $100 a month. Eddie cherished for feeding, sheltering, healing the sick and disoriented Western hippies who increasingly gathered around him. And well, when he died, his cremation was podcast live around the world. Mm -hmm. um, I interviewed him for two months and he passed 22 months after that. Thousands of his friends uh, miss him and uh, his pure, humble spirit. You know, this is about the hippie trip 50 years ago, and uh, we need desperately a new word for hippie. So much baggage comes with the word hippie, depending on your background. Uh, same thing for psychedelics. Uh, that was so loaded with gobbledygook and, <laughs> you know that uh, they, uh, the, the writers on psychedelic literature invented a new word, entheogen, which means seeking the spirit within. So, you know, straight people read a theogen, they just skip right over. <laughs> and they don't get any, you know, like negative charge. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, so we writers, yeah, we finally liberated ourselves to discuss marijuana, hashish, LSD, ecstasy, MDMA, psilocybin, DMT, dimethyltryptamine, ibogaine, Iowa, simply a theogen. So let's work on hippie. We, we need to take the negative charge out of hippie, too, like we did with psychedelics. So what to do about hippie? Uh, for me, a hippie historian... Uh, from the 1960s and 1970s, the hippies have morphed into earth people. We were the first earth tribe in the world. We gathered in Goa and Kathmandu from all nations. And without trying to, we just found ourselves an earth tribe and earth people. So in my speaking and writing, I speak about earth freak, earth woman, earth man, earth people, earth person, and wear it. Wear this way of speaking. See how it feels to you. And uh, it's a more accurate and long overdue word for hippie. Yeah. If you read my book, Earth Freaks, The Coming of the Earth People, you'll get the full dose on this new languaging Mm -hmm. Common threads between hippies and earth people. The intense love for total freedom. That's why Eddie's so special in this book. He's a, a great uh, example of a person that just keeps fighting for his freedom to not be exploited, not do you know, menial work for nothing. And... Uh, yeah, and also uh, Earth people, uh, you know, used to be hippies, post-hippies, uh, intense love for the planet and humanity. Um, transnational, yeah. Mm -hmm. One Earth kind-heartedness, world travel, enthusiasm about tantric sexuality, mm -hmm. courage to experiment, 
and play with entheogens, fascination with Eastern spirituality, and most essentially interdimensional travel and relationships. Read Yearning for Earth Legs, There Are No Foreign People, and it will describe my relationship with a goddess from another world, which <laughs> she's speaking to you right now. The last 50 years, yeah. Well, a little bit about me. I'm always curious about authors, and I'm glad they include a little bit about themselves. So me, I, I fully partook with enthusiasm. <laughs> Uh, in the hippie revolution in Nepal and India during the wild early years from 1967 to 1973. I personally logged 40,000 miles going back and forth across the Hashish Trail from Istanbul to India. Four round trips. That means eight times across Iran and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a background in photojournalism. I won the Ernie Pyle Award at Indiana University as a teenager. And uh, I was one of the few freaks that carried a camera. And, you know, that's why I have the world's <laughs> finest archives of hippie photographs of hippies in Asia. I've been a Buddhist since 1969. The whole book, uh, There Are No Foreign People, is about that monastery experience. And, uh, well, um, this is a long story. This is my largest memoir, and it's 10 hours. If you don't have that much time, I would suggest maybe start the book Copenhagen at last. Everything before that's about Eddie's journey in the United States and how he grew up and so on. If you just want the juice of his Europe and India, Nepal experiences, start with uh, Copenhagen at last. If you have the time, uh, read the, uh, you know enjoy the whole series. It's really essential if you get you know, enthusiastic, uh, touched, and inspired by my series, uh, order the book. Just say Eight Finger Eddie into your smartphone, and you'll find a way to get it off Amazon. They'll mail it right to your house. And it has maps, and you can set it down and read it later. So enjoy Eight Finger Eddie, the coming uh, of the hippies to go and Kathmandu. It's the book. I have no false modesty. If you want to know what that scene was like for 300,000 of us, this is the book that will get you there. And you'll have a lot of fun with it, too. I am an entertainer, stand-up comedian. So, <laughs> namaste.